Hi, and welcome back to PhotoPXL. I'm with John Panazzo from Colorbyte Software. And as promised in our previous video, we are now going to dive into image print. And I'm going to let John do a lot of the talking and the driving, but I'm just going to give my 10 cents, maybe a dollar's worth at least, in regards to what I feel about this software. Um, a couple of things. Um, this software, once you configure it, you have a workspace that you can configure that works for you. And the workspace that's presently on the screen that you're seeing is the workspace that I use, where my images sit in thumbnails on the right-hand side of the print layout sheet, and then I can just drag them across. But John will show us how you can throw them up into a corner, make one column, put them along the bottom. You have all this flexibility depending on number one, the real estate that you're working with on your screen, but uh, what you prefer as far as your own personal mm -hmm. taste of, of working. Um, I've always said that I'm a left to right kind of guy, and so I like to have my big image on the left, my thumbnails on the right that I can drag in. And of course, the other half of the monitor are some of the basic settings that John will run through, but essentially are set and forget. Once you kind of put them in place, you don't come back to them anymore. The most uh, that I would use is the, uh, uh, the hierarchical uh, folder um, finder where I select the folders with my images that I want to be printing. And the process basically is, I work with Capture One, and in my workflow, I do as much as I can in Capture One. And now Capture One with the latest version has luminosity type masking and other things that pretty much allows me to do almost 90, 95% of what I normally need to do to a print on a raw file before I go to output. And then what I normally output is a 16-bit Pro Photo uh, 360 uh, PPI file. And I output that as a TIFF and it goes into a, a, a output folder or I can actually have it uh, go into sequence with the raw file so that I can see them in the uh, thumbnail selection. And uh, then I print from my TIFF. And a lot of times before I do that, I take the TIFF into Photoshop, might do uh, additional spot retouching or um, one of the things that Capture One doesn't do right now is content aware. So if there's something that I need to content aware out or rock or something that's not in the right place, you know, I do my final touch ups. But that allows me to have now a master TIFF. And those master TIFFs are what I print from. And once they're done, I don't have to make them the size. So I'll put everything to 100% size. And as John will show you, image print will do the sizing for you. And uh, he'll show you all sorts of things about how you, you know, put them on your uh, layout. But for me, this environment allows me not to have to go through a whole dialog box and print you know, each sheet individually. I can load up a whole bunch of sheets and print them and cut them and do all sorts of cool things. So this for me has been a godsend, especially when I get into a high output uh, printing environment like I sometimes do. I have four printers in the studio. I've got two Epsons and two Canons. I've got a Canon Pro 1000 and the Canon Pro 2000, which we're printing to here. So image print works with both Canon and Epson printers. My Epson printers are a P800 and a 9900. So I can print up to 40 uh, some odd inch wide prints. And you know, a lot of times I'll print uh, a 44 inch by 72 inch uh, print and you know, as a big wall print. Anything else I need that goes bigger, I take to a friend who has a 60 inch printer. But uh, I don't see him that often because I don't have that much wall space left. So in any case, this is just works and it works well. It works flawlessly. And the only dialog box I use after I size the print is print. And uh, John will show you there's even a cool spooler, which allows you to go to the history, find an image that you previously printed, and print it again without doing any more setup. So John, I mean, I could talk forever and expound on how much I like image print. But uh, why don't you take us for a guided tour, and I'll throw in my five cents where I can. OK. Let's get started. Um, I do want to mention that right now we're using image print black. But the nice thing about Image Print Black and Image Print Red is they share the same interface. So other than a few features of how you load profiles, right? Because Image Print Red sits on the OEM driver, Image Print Black sits on top of our own drivers. So that interaction is a little different. Other than that, features, they're all the same. Okay. In fact, you can actually run Image Print Red and Black at the same time, just toggling between them. Okay. Um, you can see that right here. I'm on a Canon... Uh, Pro 2000 with Image Print Black, but if I want to toggle into Image Print Red, this is Red Desktop, and it's right now pointing to the Canon Pro 1000, right? And so I can lay out for both printers. It remembers all the settings from both Image Print Red and Black, um, so you can move back and forth between uh, both of them. 
Why you would want to do that? Well, plain and simple, image print black supports just a, a small amount of printers, right? From Canon and Epson, just the very best photographic printers um, in the industry. Image print red stands for runs every device. And the importance of that is that if there's a, a driver for the printer, we'll drive it. And that way you get the same workflow. So in a lot of studios, they'll have their high-end printers, but they'll also have some other printers that maybe we don't drive. They can add image print red to it and have them both at the same time. That's why we made it so that it shared the same interface and could easily toggle back and forth between the two. So like a, a Prixma printer or some of those things with the small ink cartridges or you know, tiny little printers, as long as there's a driver on them, you, you can push it. Color copiers, oh, for right. example, uh, there's, they can do some amazing quality for certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, document printing, image print now has a, a fabulous PDF engine built into it. So it can uh, easily act as a, as a document printer, um, especially if there's a lot of graphics in it because so, it'll process them so fast. Those are kind of like laser. So you can do inkjet, laser, and, and uh, what and else? What else is out there? Dye sublimation? Dye sublimation yeah. printers, yep. Yep, especially the little uh, event dye sublimation printers that uh, photographers bring on, on site with them okay, cool. to, uh, to the events. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of do an overview and explain right. you know, the interface in general. Real quick, we'll go through, uh, this is just zooming the page view in and out. Okay. Right. Um, why is that important? Well, because we can add pages. So if we wanna see a, a, a lot of pages we're gonna be laying out, we wanna view them all at the same time, we can, change the page page view on the fly. One of the things I want to stress on that one, go back to that for a second. You can take one image and stretch it out throughout all these things and it'll match them all up. So oh, if, sure. if you want to do, for example, uh, in this case it would be eight, 16, 20 images in flush frames that you know kind of sit offset from each other mm -hmm. a quarter of an inch, you can basically do that. And, uh, it, it does a really cool job. So mm -hmm. sometimes if you're getting into some big jobs where you got to tile them or do something creative in the display purposes, this is a great way to do yeah, it. You it can, works perfectly. You can actually see as I let go of the mouse here, how it's going to divide this image up. And yeah. so you can move in size and um, you can set the overlap um, to whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And uh, the software will take care of all of that for you. So instant mural printing. And one of the, the features that I like most about this, and this is the thing I stress, as I said, I only make one TIFF file. I don't have to size it or worry about DPI or anything like this. And as you see with how we're sizing this here, image print has its own algorithm or whatever in regards to the sizing, correct? Right. And I just have to take the original and size it. And I've actually taken originals that have come off the iPhone and you know cropped images mm -hmm. that were eight by 10 JPEGs from 10 years ago and put them in here and have made 1722 prints and um, your interpolation factors, both on the scaling down and the scaling up, have just been amazing. So this is another one of these benefits is you don't have to go to a third party program prior to printing out. It, you know, it does it all for you from your original one file, regardless of what it was. And everything we do, Kevin, is non-destructive. Yeah. So the image always remains pure. So whatever we do, whatever changes we make to it, cropping, scaling, um, at, it just happens at print time. Yep. Uh, those changes get logged in the job file. So if we ever want to reprint, they're there. Um, but the original image is untouched and remains untouched. And the, the beauty of that, as you've seen, is because we often print things multiple sizes yep. for different reasons, we don't have to have saved copies of those files hanging around on our hard drive. Our scaling and everything we've done is very specifically engineered for printing, right? So we do a, an amazing job for what we want to do print-wise, right? We're, we're not a replacement for Photoshop, you know, as far as editing images sure. go. But uh, as far as a print engine goes, you know, we, we think we, we do a great job with that. I don't want to argue with you. Cool. So moving down here, we, you know, rotation, um, simple flip, left, right, top, bottom. Yeah, actually, it doesn't hurt to flip this one because you want to know where the bird's going left or right anyway. So sure. compositionally speaking, you can try it out a couple of different ways. Exactly. Um, fit to margins. Uh, this is an interesting one because oftentimes we're, we're printing on a, on a cut sheet and we want a specific margin, mm -hmm. top and bottom. 
um, even works on a roll as well if you we set the page size to what you want. But you know, let's just say I wanted a, an inch and wanted it all around. I can set that. So this is fit to margins and it says, you know, give me the parameters that I've specified on this image. So I don't have to do math in my head to figure it all out. I just say, okay, and there's your inch. So it, it crops the photo to make that one inch. It did a crop zoom. Now, if we want to see what it did, just double click on the image. Oh, and then you can see the zoom marks and, there. And there's your crop zoom. And now you can move it around. See, this is why I love this program so much. Is it, it just does this cool stuff. Right? And yet it maintained what I told it to do. It, you know, because I said, give me an inch, it lets me move it around now, but it maintains my original parameters. Yeah, very cool. If any time I want to reset, just hit reset. You know, go back, go down the list here, one to one, always brings the image back to its original size. Yeah, so what are we all working with here is a nine inch by nine inch type print. Right. On original, original sure. output. Uh, fit to page, center. So hit a button and it centers perfectly. Uh, the scissors, this is how you remove images from a page. So if I had multiple images on the page and I just wanted to remove the one that I had selected, I would hit the black scissors here. Um, it's giving me a warning. I can turn that warning off. Say, okay, it disappears. Now, if I had multiple images on the page and I wanted to remove all the images, then I would hit the red scissors. Yeah. Uh, we do have some text features that allow you to to put text uh, on the page anywhere you want, on top of an image, you know, below an image, anywhere you want, you can do the do the text, put it there. Um, I haven't used that often, but I've made a couple posters, like where I announce a, a, an open uh, first Friday opening or something like that. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. It works like wow. I don't have to like go into Photoshop and it's try vector to use those yeah. text boxes and crap. It's, it's just, vector based, yeah. just like Photoshop. So you're yeah, you're just works. accessing your font list on your in your library. Yep. And, uh, and it just allows you, again, to not have to jump into okay. another package to do something that, that you want to do. And, th and that's really what we're trying to do is, is keep things centralized here. Let's go ahead and bring back an image because I want to show, really, there's multiple ways really to do almost everything in image print. And since sizing is one of the things you do often, um, let's look at that for a bit. Um, we already showed you we can grab a side and just enlarge it, so it scales shrink it, proportionally. Right, scales proportionally. If I grabbed a corner, it would scale disproportionately. I could come up here, just right in my title bar, and type in a size. So if I want that to be 16 inches, scales proportionally, and it'll figure out the height for that. Yep. Again, if I double clicked on it, it brings up Smart Crop, and I can set photo sizes that are pre-programmed, uh, or I can type in a size here, right? So if I wanted to have, uh, we'll do a 20 by 16, for example. And it's going to, again, show you what that crop and zoom factor is going to be and, and allow you to move it. Not only that, I can now change that. And look how it... Tighter. But it, it knows that I asked for a 20 by 16, right. so it knows to preserve those original right, settings. Right. So it now, doesn't it doesn't fight you. So no. a lot of times when you're not printing from an application that's designed for printing mm -hmm. and you try to do these things, it's the, the the application's fighting you. Sure. Right? It's always it's trying to do something different than what you're asking it to do. Well we're on this page though if I wanted to make like a two eight by tens of this guy, I can do it on the same page, correct? Sure, absolutely. So what would I do for that? Ah we can just Bring them in again. Oh, you bring them in again. And then resize again. Right. We can size, double click on it and just say 8 by 10 since that's one of our, um, this one would be a 10 by 8 with that orientation. And there you go. And then, and, uh, yeah. And it's already, well, width is already 10 inches. Right. So, so it, it Can I do a duplicate of that one and just drag it sure. to the left? So uh, we, can, we can make a copy of it. Um, we could bring it in again and do the same thing, or we can do a step and repeat. So under image process, image properties here, I'll go to step and repeat, and I'll just say step that image twice. Yeah, this, I, I love this feature. When I did Christmas cards, I just basically made one and then yeah. stepped and repeated it across and down, and you know, it was pretty cool. And so, you know, really, you can, you can fill your page with 
as much stuff as you want. When you're ready to keep adding, again, it says, hey, there's no, there's no more room on this page. What do you want me to do? Go to a new page, yep. right? If I say, well, you know, I'm really, I don't need to go to a new page because these are just going to be little, right? I can, <laughs> you know, everything. Very cool. Yep. So then you the, can put the page out. flow is all live, so mm -hmm. I can move, you know, between pages easily with images. I don't have to worry. And you know, it, even if I hit print right now, this blank page isn't going to print. It, the software so there's knows no, no there's nothing on it. I can get rid of it by simply hitting my page icon, and it'll disappear. Very um, intuitive. And then again, if I wanted to step and repeat this, we'll just go there and say, "Give me six of those." And your and new printing software would be able to determine where all these are and cut these out, right? Exactly. Like cutting software. So we'll, we'll get to that later, but yeah, yeah, anything just, you see on the page when you hit print, cut vectors are generated I'm for just it. Just looking at this, realizing, what it, oh, God, this would be a bitch to, to have to cut apart, but hey. Sure. And so, you know, the, the layout is, is very interactive. Mm -hmm. Now, if we wanted to control the actual layout algorithm, we can do that as well. So we're going to move on down to uh, our advanced settings and go to auto layout settings. And this is really the heart of the layout engine. This is, if you're doing a lot of production work and you don't want to have to manually size all your images, you basically come in here and say, let's just say I wanted to do four by sixes. Um, we're going to turn, crop and zoom gets turned on automatically, auto flow. But now, I could select this whole folder of images, or as I bring images in, you'll notice that they're automatically sized. Oh, you're not dragging them. In this case, you're just double clicking them. I'm just them. double clicking them. You know, um, I have a gutter set to a quarter of an inch. I can remove that at any time, right? Let's just say I got in there and I started going, you know, hey, I, was, I needed to, you know, that one should have been a little bigger and uh, whatnot. And I messed up my page and it, you know, it doesn't really look good. I just did a right mouse click. I'm going to go to shuffle. You know, I'll say try rotations. This time I'm going to say no gutters. And there so you go. So essentially it's kind of a smart layout. It takes a look at all the size of a piece of paper yeah. and figures out how to fit the images to them better. It even looks backwards too. So if you have multiple pages and you're laying out, it'll look backwards to see if there's space on a previous page. And once again with image. your cutter, I mean, typically when I had done this in the past, I'd be leaving a space between each so I could, you know, not screw it up when I tried to cut it. But you know, with the cutter solution you have, you can butt them up against each other like this. And that would work. be the preferred method would be to butt them up because the cutter is so accurate that uh, it'll literally, it's going to cut right on the, that oh, line very, between very cool. Excellent. the images. Um, so this is where you control the layout engine and, and literally you can do anything you want um, with this. I'm going to go ahead and set a custom size. And let's just say we were going to do you know, 20 by 24s, and we wanted them centered on the page. Yep. Right, so it'll even rotate them to best fit them in. Now, I like this, this solution a lot because if anybody who's visited my studio knows that most of my pictures have a white border around them. Mm -hmm. I very seldom print edge to edge or uh, borderless because I just kind of like to have that, mm -hmm. you know, little thing around, especially when I frame them because I want that little white edge to go all the way around the print after I do a matting. So this is a clever way of doing that. You maximize the size to a standard output size and you have plenty of room for, uh, you know, where, where you need to do the framing and so forth. Yeah. And if you were doing a lot of images, for example, we also have a really nifty feature here called placeholders. We'll turn that on and it is actually going to show you how many is going to fit on this page? Yeah, these various gray scale. That's right? cool. And as I, I'll remove the gutters here, and you can see the gutters move away here. Hmm. And uh, that way, if you wanted to change the actual page origin point, for example, we'll move this over. If we wanted these to, to be centered on the page, then we can change that XY origin point. And now when I bring in these images, you can see how they perfectly line up. Pretty neat. Yeah. Very, very big on time saving. I mean, wow. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. And of course, 
you know, maybe you're all getting ideas while you, you watch this video, but uh, over lunch we were talking about our iPhones and I have like so many images in my iPhone. I have 82,000 some odd images in my iPhone, so call me crazy. But, you know, there's, it was, we, we discussed, well, what do you do with all those pictures? And like, I have a, a, a new kitten, I have three new kittens, and it would be really cool to be able to take all these pictures that are sitting there. I can export them from my iPhone you know, into JPEGs and then just take the folder, make my four by sixes and uh, the cutter will cut them all apart. And now I've got these pictures that, you know, I've got that mm -hmm. are snapshot size, but, you know, I don't have to go to my phone. Oh, absolutely. And while you're making those four by six too, if you're unhappy with the crop at any time, it's, it's live. So we can, we can go to smart crop at any time we want make adjustments and watch how the positioning and the sizing is not disturbed. It knows what you want to do, right? Oh, it's, yeah. it's a, because you've set the engine, the engine's going to, the, the algorithm's going to preserve what you've asked it to do. Now, you, you, for the, so we can share this with some portrait type people, you can do packages too. So oh, yeah. if I had a customer that ordered an eight by 10, four, four by fives and nine wallets, Mm -hmm. uh, you could easily set these up for doing package printing. So we, we have a complete uh, template creation um, package built into image print. Huh, so the, okay. these, are, these are ones that are pre-made that are just here for, Standard for example. Package right? Yeah, yeah. But to, to make your own is simple. Go down to new. Um, it automatically looks at what page size you're on. You can you know, change that if you wish. Um, or if you're ready to just start laying out frames, you just go in here and, and you just start either choosing predefined sizes. There you go. There's four by sixes. Mm -hmm. We can say... And they're all different colors too, the borders. Right. So I just changed them to same image for all frames. So we can okay. do groupings here, right? So let's say I wanted this group to be, if I drop an image in, it fills out all these frames with the same image. But let's just say then I wanted to have... Uh, an eight by 10, and I want it to be a different image. So I can change it to group one, for example, and it's gonna change color here. And now, you know, when this template is live on the screen and I hover over it, so, um, you know, we'll, I'll show you that real quick. Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll add a, a couple. I'll change that to group one so that's the same. And we'll add another one. and. We'll change that to group one. So now I have two groups and we'll just call it quits for this. We'll go and give it a name. And let's say, let's call it group one and we'll save it. And now it's part of my list. So to, to use the templates, we're gonna go to the layout style mm -hmm. and we'll choose template. And then we'll find a template that we wanna to, to there's load in the interface. Right. It'll show up here. And now, remember we had set a couple groupings. So my first grouping will fill out and then my second group. And now because we're set to auto flow, it says- You're trying to start a new page. You know, let's go ahead and do some more, right? We don't have to. No. Um, we can just get rid of that, go back to the first here. And now, again, these images, you can still, even in a template, smart crop. Yeah, make adjustments to them that way. Right, so you can continue to, to adjust and every image in that grouping will adjust with it. Now, okay, if I have a four by six frame and I have a piano that I want to stick in it, mm -hmm. I, I don't have to do auto crop. I can turn auto crop off and it'll just bring in the image yep. in its original size, but fill in the space with it. Absolutely. So I might have, uh -huh. you know, like letterboxed white borders or something, but sure. it'll t it'll maximize to the width or the height, whatever works mm -hmm. best. Uh, so you don't always have to use auto crop. Oh no, not at all. Right. You you can you can keep things their their normal aspect ratio. Very cool. Uh, in fact, when you're setting a size, you know, regardless of what that size is, we'll set an eight a 10 by eight, for example, I can always turn off crop and zoom. Right, it is a selection here. So when I bring that in, you can notice that that's 10 by 7.4. Sure, sure. So it left it in its 
original aspect ratio. There was no crop and zoom done to it. All right, so you guys all get a kind of a feel how this page layout works. And really, until you start experiencing and getting into a production environment, you can't appreciate it. But there's two more things that I would like John to share with us in the limited amount of time we have. Yeah. Is uh, I would like you to show how we do with paper profiles, because I think you're... Uh, profile valet, as it's called, is really impressive. And there is another program running underneath this. It's a spooler program. Mm -hmm. And that's a very valuable tool in the production side of things also. So if we can cover at least those two things before we move sure. on to the, the next uh, video, that would be great. So profile valet is, is actually connecting to our server, our profile repository. So every printer that we support in Image Print Black there's around 3,000 to 5,000 profiles we do. Oh, really? Right. So when people ask, well, why is Image Print Black so much more money than Image Print Red? Image Print Black is a very labor-intensive product, right? So we're profiling uh, the world's best photo papers and fine art papers. And if we don't have a profile for a given paper, we'll build it for free for the life of the product. Right. You don't even have to be on the current version, right? So that's part of what you're buying into. Yep. So when, when a lot of people ask, you know, so what do I really get with Image Print Black? You're, you're getting the ability to have access to what we think are the highest quality profiles because we do a, a multi-step process in our profiling for every paper that you come across that you'll want to print on. Well, I, you know, this is, the, this is one of the strong points and this is, you know, what we found before specifically when we, you know, did the original challenge, mm -hmm. you know, can we make a better profile than image print was just how good these profiles were. Um, you know, we can spend hours and hours fooling around and so forth making profiles, but literally I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, use your own profile and then, you know, try yeah. one of these out and you'll see it's incredible. Now you can't use these profiles in Photoshop or anything. so. You can use them to soft proof in Photoshop, soft proof, right? But, uh, but but they are built for our drivers, right? right? So so in Image Print Black, we're creating the print driver, right? We're using our CMM, so our color engine. Um, we actually write our own profiling engine, Correct. so we're not using off the shelf. So everything is made to fit together in a finely tuned system. I've heard you tell me before that you actually control the printer and you control the ink and all sorts of things like that in regards to your drivers. Yeah, yeah. every printer is different, you know, to the level that, that we control it at um, in different models and different manufacturers. But um, in, in every profile we do, we have both a lookup table that describes sort of how we want the ink to, to uh, fill the page, right. so to speak. And then on top of that, we profile. So we're, we're getting a multi-step process there. So we, okay. we make the, the baseline um, a sort of a better surface to profile on top of. Correct. Now, John mentioned just a few minutes ago that uh, they make custom profiles for the life of new papers. Now, doing what I've been doing for the last umpteenth years, I get a lot of paper before anybody else sees it. Mm -hmm. you know, we're asked to try it out, test it out, print it out. And I've taken sheets of this when it's come in and sent them down to you guys. Mm -hmm. And because uh, originally you tried to teach me how to make one, and I think I screwed it up because I had color management set wrong on the computer. So now it just became easier to, to send the paper yep. to you and you uh, print it on and then throw it up on a valet and I just download it after that. So, you know, that's a nice thing. If any of you get involved where you need or don't find the paper you're, you're working with, yeah. you guys will make the profile for it Correct. as long as you get a hold of yep. the paper. Yep. You can either print our target for us, we'll tell you how, or you can send us the paper and, and we'll do it all. <laughs> One of these days on your visits, you'll make sure I learn how to do the target without screwing yep. it up. So, so, I, so back to the profile right. valet. Um, every time you launch image print, we download an up-to-date index file yep. that has a an up-to-date list of every profile that we've done for your printer, right? So you're always up-to-date every time you launch image print. So when you go to the valet, you set a couple parameters. What, what ink are you using? Photo black, matte black? Are you in color or grayscale? Um, for certain printers like uh, the Epson printers, we do narrow gamut grayscale. It's coming soon for the Canon printers. And that's an extra option there. And then you go to the the brand of the paper that you're using, mm -hmm. right? And so you go to, I'll go to Hannah Mule, for example, 
And then you can see for photo black in color, these are all the Hanamule papers yep. that are supported. Um, click the profile you want, set the temperature, right? So daylight's your standard. Um, we do all of our profiles in five different color temperatures. This is important. And I didn't know how important it was until we tried it out in each version and then looked at how the prints looked under the lights that mm -hmm. we were putting. For the most part, we do a mixed daylight uh, tungsten kind Correct. of uh, uh, environment in most of the places right. we go. So, so we, we end up working with that system kind of yeah, like a daylight. We have, we have two mixed. Yeah. We have a mixed warm and a mixed cool. And then we have some straight temperatures for daylight, fluorescent, and tungsten. And these are viewing conditions. Right. So if you know, you know the viewing condition of your print, we'll balance it perfectly for that light. If you don't know, and most likely you'll be in a mixed lighting condition in, in a home mm -hmm. use or office use, then you can set one of the mixed temperatures. Um, and so I'll set this for uh, mixed warm or mixed cool I clicked on, and we'll say download and apply. And it's gonna go to our, our server um, and it's gonna retrieve that profile and put it in place uh, for use. And uh, when it does that, what? you're gonna get a little house symbol right down here and now it's right there. And that means that that profile is now on your system and you don't have to we download have it up. again, right? And you know, I should mention, if you really wanna see the difference, print it out under fluorescent and then take it outside. So make a print mm -hmm. with your fluorescent uh, uh, color setting and then take the print outside and see how it changes. It's yeah. really pretty cool that you have the ability to make a really good print based upon lighting conditions because lighting conditions will change mm -hmm. how that print looks. And one other note that you mentioned, your narrow band or uh, black and white. Right. One of the things that attracted me to image print originally was I liked doing real beautiful black and whites. And I have never right. seen black and white come off a printer as well as it does here. You actually have you know, black and white or grayscale profiles, as you say. Correct. So you're just focusing in on that. And um, the nuances in you know, the highlight areas and specifically the shadow areas, mm -hmm. especially if you make really fine prints, will just blow you out of the water. I mean, right. you know, the first time you see it, you'll say, this is worth the price of admission yep. only. So, And we just released, for the, for the Epson P-Series printers, we just released our next generation of narrow gamut black and white. And now that technology is being added to the Canon printers as we speak. In addition, even though we're not going to show it here, you can do t you know dual toning and other toning and, and all that. Uh, right. So it's amazing once you pick a tone, you have it set yeah. and it's there always, and you know you can just have that slight nuance if that's the way you want to set your print up. So yeah. uh, a lot of beautiful yeah. things like that. Now there's a there's a ton of things you can do inside Image Print. We we've, we've really scratched the surface basically. There's we can do gallery wraps on the fly for printing on canvas. We can put uh, borders on images. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of that stuff uh, we'll cover when we move over to look at the cutting software. Correct. And, um, and, and see that there. A lot of this stuff, if you're really interested, remember in the first video we asked you if you're interested in us doing a workshop or a seminar for a couple days where you can come and learn mm -hmm. all this stuff intimately. You know, give us some feedback. If this is something you're interested in, we'll figure out a way to do it. Because once again, if you're doing gallery wraps, the way they handle the gallery wraps is really pretty freaking cool. It's just another 10 minutes worth of video that we want right. to show you that, you know, just trust us, it's there. And, it's uh, there. You're, you're going right to do there. it anyway while we do it. So uh, let's take a look at the spooler. When we're ready to print, there's a little icon on each side of the, of the job name. Yep. We're gonna go over to the right icon. This is, brings up the spooling system. And right now our spooler is probably active, so I'm not gonna send a job into it. Make sure we have the right printer set. I didn't, I didn't change that when we moved over to, yeah, see? Let's make there sure. we go. So we're working, just so you know when you're watching this, where this, this Mac that I'm working with is dedicated to driving my two Canon printers, the Pro 2000 and the Pro 1000, which is sitting right behind us. So these are the jobs you've already printed, Kevin, and if, and if we go in and just highlight any of these jobs, we can actually see the thumbnail of what that job was. Yep. Now I'm going to go ahead and disable the queue, so I'm going to say pause printing, and we're going to send this job into the queue. So we're going to go over here and say print, and we'll go back to the spooler, and we'll see that that job is now sitting in the top of the queue. And there's a thumbnail of it right there. Right. Now, what, when you say you've paused the printer, what you're doing, you can actually fill the queue mm -hmm. and then like 
turn it on and walk out the door and come back the next morning and all your stuff's on the floor or sure. in, in the, the catch tray or whatever, depending on how you have it set up. Right. So that's kind of a, a nice thing to do is that, you know, if, if you're just too busy or, you know, you, you don't want to do the printing right away, you can set it up to print afterwards and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of fill into the queue as you go. Yep. And uh, as you saw before, we can, the queue will manage multiple printers, right? So we can toggle between printers and you can have multiple printers printing at the same time. I've never tried that. I didn't know we would do that. Absolutely. It's pretty yep. cool. Now these job files down here, um, they keep a, a log of everything you did in that print job. So we're not saving massive print job yep. files here. These are very tiny. And if you want to reprint this job, you just drag it up to the top of the queue. Nice. It'll reassemble it and print it. This to me is one of the strongest things there is here because many times, you know, I'm, like my open houses, like I was saying, I have you know, all those prints that I've just made for uh, like the uh, the first Friday month. And mm -hmm. if somebody comes in and buys it, I just walk over to my desk, load the paper, and sure. go back to the old job and print it, and I can in instantly replace my inventory of 13, 19 yep. prints. Um, you can actually archive jobs and restore jobs from mm -hmm. archive. So if you archive a job, it'll archive the images with it, the profiles that were used for it, and all the settings. You can put it off on another drive or DVD or whatever, and then if you have a, a need to bring that back and reprint for a customer or, or whatnot, you can restore that archive and print it again exactly the way it was printed the first time. And you know, like I said, the advantage is I don't have to go back and drag the image over, resize it to fit the, yep. the system the way I want or regroup it or anything like that. I can just go back and repeat you know, all these. So you know, if I'm doing business cards or something that I might want to reprint six mm -hmm. months from now to to update that, I can do that. So sure. a huge time saver. And remember, this is the differences that you're looking at. I don't want to sound like a sales guy because I probably do because that's just my nature. But I get enthusiastic about things specifically after I've used them and said, God, that was a time saver. Or the fact that I've actually, you know, can turn this thing on at 4.30 in the afternoon and come back in the morning and everything's done. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to hang around, you know, sure. finagling with it or doing yeah. things along those lines. What if you printed a job and you want to reprint that job, but you want to change the paper profile. Yep. So we can actually rebuild a job from the spooling system and bring it right back into the interface. It'll reassemble it. With and, another paper. And then you can choose a different profile and then send it back to print. Fabulous. So, you know, this is the difference between a professional layout package and printing from a package that wasn't designed to print. Sure. You know, and unfortunately in, in our industry, so many people use packages like Photoshop as their main printing utility. And it's really wasn't designed to print. It has the ability to print, yep. but you're not, you're, you're missing out on all the productivity that you could be having. Well, and you know, I have so many people that, you know, have been on my workshops and I share with how my workflow is. And of course they say, well, I can do all that. I can print right from Lightroom. And yes, you can do some packages and things mm -hmm. from Lightroom. Uh, but you know, can you call back up that printing package you know, in the, the, the spooler like, you know, that we showed here. These are the things that really work. And do you really have a master file? You know, Lightroom doesn't make a TIFF file unless you output it. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll make a nice print and, and essentially probably creates, I believe, a, a temporary file that it prints mm -hmm. from. But once it's done printing, that file goes away. You know, I have a master file of everything at 100% the way I want it that I know I can go to at any moment put it right in here, no matter what paper I'm using, change the canvas, go to black and white, whatever, and it just works. Right. And I think that's the key and why I've stayed with this system so long. I've tried others out, and while well, there's some cool things out there, <laughs> nothing makes sense compared to what I find in the image print. This, this is how much it's changed my printing and joy for photography and saved me hundreds of dollars on buying cases of wine where I would have been flubbing around trying to mm -hmm. print from Photoshop. And so there's too many dialog boxes to yeah. choose. And we're, we're giving a, just a rough overview here, but if you go to our website or our YouTube channel, um, we have little videos on all the different features in image print, things that, that people like to do. And you can learn, you know, each one's, you know, three to five minutes max. Yep. And you can just uh, sort of focus in on the stuff you want to learn. As we've done in the past, I hope that you guys come back and, uh, you know, visit us more often. John's here once or twice a year and we kind of catch up on things and do an update video. So 
uh, you'll you know can look for some of those things. And don't forget, we might even be doing workshops. So yeah. let us know, and uh, we'll be happy to do that. Now we're going to move on to what I still think is the you know save the best for last kind of deal, and it's the new cutter that you have uh, for doing basically taking things like we just showed and cutting them out and then some. So uh, how about we just take a break and we'll see you on the next video in the next article where we highlight the cutter from, what, what kind of cutter is this? What's the name? Uh, the the, the cutter is from a company called Graftech. Okay, so. And uh, it is a cutting plotter as, as a, the technical name for it. And the, uh, the new uh, feature in image print, it's an option, uh, is called cut it out. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> and, yeah. and we're gonna show you how to do just that.